for this video, we're going to jump right into the Keycloak interface. Now, we'll see how to uh, start Keycloak and get a kind of a basic demo environment set up in just a minute. Uh, but I want to talk about some of the terms that Keycloak uses to describe things. Uh, and the easiest way to do this is is basically we're just going to go down the the left sidebar, uh, and that's essentially how Keycloak uh, lays things out. Each term, each object that Keycloak manages, is essentially a separate screen that uh, you can get to through this this left navigation. Um, so the first term that we really need to talk about is the realm, uh, and realm is uh, how Keycloak kind of isolates different uh, worlds, right? Realm, world. Uh, realms can have their own users, their own groups, their own clients, which we'll get to describing each of those terms in just a minute. But it's kind of like a mini I am world uh, within Keycloak. Now, you could certainly use just one realm within Keycloak, and that would be sufficient. You could use a separate realm for each application. You could use a separate realm for each tenant if you're doing a multi-tenant application. Um, but the idea is that each realm is isolated from every other realm. And that is like a giant wall between all the realms. This is the strongest isolation uh, that you get uh, in Keycloak from uh anything else. Uh, it is, it's, it's pretty much the way that uh, resources are isolated from other resources. Uh, so those realms will hopefully become a little more clear as you get into uh, customizing things within Keycloak. Uh, and there are certainly uh, conversations. You can, you can find Google results, uh, uh, conversations on various forums and that sort of thing on how to effectively use realms for your particular situation. And you can certainly leave comments down below. Uh, and I will, I will try to answer them. If you have, uh, your particular situation and you want to know if separate realms is right for that or something else, we, we can talk about that. Um, moving on from realms, actually, before we move on from realms, I should note that by default, Keycloak provides a master realm. Uh, the master realm is basically the realm that manages Keycloak. So uh, when you add a user to the master realm, that is adding a user who is able to do administration on Keycloak, not a user who can log into an application. And in fact, while you could use the master realm to do authentication for applications, it is not recommended. It is discouraged, strongly discouraged to use the master realm for anything other than managing Keycloak. Uh, so you should at least create one other realm for everything you're doing with Keycloak. Again, if you're doing, if you're managing multiple applications with Keycloak, maybe that's separate realms. If you're managing multiple tenants with Keycloak, maybe that's sep separate realms. Uh, in, in my case, the last implementation where I stood up Keycloak, uh, I separated everything out by tenants. Um, so basically the application that uh, people were logging into using Keycloak was a multi-tenant application. Each tenant had its own realm in Keycloak. And we also had lots of scripts to make sure that the realms kind of stayed in sync and they continue to work with the application and that sort of thing. That's a whole separate topic, uh, but that's realms in a nutshell. Now. Going through the rest of the concepts quickly, uh, clients are essentially applications that use this realm to sign in. Uh, so in this case, this is the master realm. So the clients list includes basically Keycloak itself. Uh, client scopes are sections of the uh, of the application. Uh, this is if you've been around OAuth. Uh, for any length of time, uh, you've seen scopes before. Um, this is this is a common term across all uh, authentication systems, uh, pretty much. Uh, realm roles uh, and um, actually client roles. There, so there are two types of roles, but they are basically permissions, right? In some cases, they mean something to Keycloak, uh, but when it comes to the client roles, they are client specific. They don't mean anything to Keycloak. They are just a string uh, that you assign to a user or a group or another role. We'll get to that in a later video. Um, 
and your application gets reported, hey, this user has this role. Hopefully this means something to you. Users, groups, um, users obviously are the individual users. Groups are unsurprisingly groups of users. Groups can also have subgroups. Um, one note about this is that um, at, unless they've changed this, um, groups cannot uh, have multiple parents. Groups are always a child of one and only one group. Uh, then we'll talk about some of the realm settings. So themes, uh, we'll talk about theming in its own course, uh, but you can choose different themes for login, account, admin, and email. Um, and by default, I believe we use the Keycloak V2 theme. Uh, even if it's if it doesn't show up as one being chosen here, by default, it's the Keycloak V2 theme. Then we have identity providers. And identity providers are... Uh, basically, uh, how people can log in. So you you define the realm, which is kind of the conglomeration of uh, users and clients and, and groups and permissions and all this stuff. But maybe you don't store the username and password in Keycloak, or Keycloak isn't the source of truth. Uh, if you're a company, you probably have some sort of uh, directory Right. If you're if you're a Windows organization, you have an Active Directory domain that may be provided by Azure, um, and you can connect uh, Keycloak to that to be its its source of truth for for identity information. Um, you can also open it up to things like GitHub and Facebook and Google and and so on and so forth. Uh, this is more for um, you know, customers or users or something like that, right? If you just want to enable people to, you know, sign up with Facebook or log in with Facebook, um, you can enable this and it basically enables potentially anyone in the world. Each one of these has its own specific configuration, which we won't get into the, in this course, but each one can be configured specifically. Uh, and depending on how they work, you might be able to restrict the users and, and, and where they come from and maybe only say, you know, people from my Google domain or specific Google domains, um, depending on the, the provider, that might be an option. And then of course, user federation. So uh, if you have like an active directory domain or just an LDAP uh, directory, you can link that in here and use that as your, your source of truth for the users. This works a little bit differently from identity providers um, in that there's actually a sync. It's basically Keycloak is a source of truth for authentication data, but where it determines who's a user and who's not a user comes from, you know, an LDAP database or, or a, a Kerberos uh, system. So those are the basic uh, major themes, major concepts in Keycloak. Uh, and at this point, we've kind of talked about all of the high level stuff. In the next video, in the next couple of videos, uh, we'll get into actually running Keycloak for yourself. So stay tuned.